Okay, so to bring all that energy together and to get the total energy, we found that it was 201 joules for the heating of water up to negative 10, or ice, excuse me, from negative 10 up to zero degrees. So we had 201 joules here. Then going from ice to water was 3,346 joules. Then the heating of water all the way up to, from zero, or yeah, zero to 100 degrees was 4,190 joules. The most energy in the entire thing was changing the water to steam. That was 22,644 joules. And the last step was taking the uh, steam and heating it up the 10 degrees. That was an extra 201 joules. So we really need to add all of those numbers up. Bring up our calculator again and uh, get it to turn on. Then we take all of our numbers and add those up. So we had a 201 and we were adding 3346 and not multiply but add 4190, add 22644 and add up another 201 and your total energy is 30,582 joules. 30,582 joules, which then is a more convenient unit, 30.582 kilojoules. That's the energy to take it all the way, ice at negative 10, and heat it all the way up to steam at 110 degrees. You cannot treat that as one temperature change of 120 degrees times one number because there are different factors at play. There's a phase change and a temperature change and two phase changes, in fact, going on. So you can't do this in one step. It's a multi-step problem. And it's straightforward when you break it into what's happening at each section. And so if you do this with no matter whether it's water or whatever type of compound you're dealing with, as long as you know its points where it changes its state and what energy it requires to make it change its state, you can work this out. Good luck.